Kavulini Solomon Airlines first touchdown in Vanuatu's Espirito Santo Pecoa International Airport. Savo Island Healthcare faces many challenges. And National Football Under-19 boys first win in their quest to qualify for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Chile. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Ossie Fellow, Solomon Airlines first flight from Brisbane to Vanuatu's Santo Espiritu landed at the Santo Pecoa International Airport, marking the recommencement of a weekly international service yesterday. The flight received a warm welcome with a water cannon salute, a local string band, fresh salu salu and fresh coconuts for passengers. The flight IE726 operates weekly, providing a direct connection between Brisbane and Santo. The return service includes a brief stop in Port Vila before continuing to Brisbane. Vanuatu Tourism Office CEO expressed excitement about the resumed service, noting the boost it provides to the local tourism economy. She highlighted the convenience for Australian travellers to explore Santo's attractions, such as the Champagne Coast, and the Blue Holes. The weekly Airbus A320 service re-establishes a direct route for passengers and freight between Australia and Vanuatu. Espiritu Santo, the largest island in Vanuatu's northern region, is a popular international holiday destination. Now, two workshops under the United Nations Development Programme under the Provincial Government and Service Delivery Project ended successfully this week. Now the project successfully concluded the collaboration and coordination for WASH service delivery. The workshop aimed at strengthening coordination and collaboration with the Ministry of Health and Medical Services and the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. And another ended today, Integrating Climate Resilience into WASH Programs workshop which aimed at building the capacity of provincial government officers to integrate climate resilience perspective in the overall planning process and design risk information, water, sanitation and hygiene programs. Now, both workshops organized under the European Union funded provincial governments and service delivery project brought together key technical staff from the Ministry of Health education and provincial governments and institutional strengthening and all nine provincial governments of Solomon Islands. Skoro Canal, Central, Western, Timotu, Choizol, Isabel, Makira, Malaita and Renbel. Considering the existing local capacity at the provincial level, these workshops had the objectives to reinforce the understanding of ministries and provincial governments and staff. It is aimed to highlight the importance of implementing activities in the health and education sectors through practical approaches while integrating climate risk reduction into WASH interventions, which is in schools and health centres. And they aim to do so by reflecting on coordination and collaboration approaches, focusing on the practical use of available resources and exploring practical approaches for integrating climate change planning into WASH interventions. Now, programs to commemorate the independence celebrations in Honiara will commence over the weekend. The national government is spending $2 million on the festivities and is calling on the public to join in celebrating the country's 46th independence anniversary. The celebrations will officially start on Sunday with a church service at the St. Barnabas Cathedral, followed by the main event on Monday at the National Stadium. Now today, a clean-up session took place in Honiara as workers supported the City Council's call to tidy up in anticipation of the weekend's events. Residents in rural areas are encouraged to wear their Solomon Island colours to show their patriotism during the independence celebrations. 
Now in Savo Island, the Panueli Health Area Centre is confronting significant challenges. Now despite these difficulties, the local community along with health care providers remains committed to maintaining essential health services for residents. Tawuli News' Jeremy Gual visited the area and brings us this report. Area health centres plays a vital role in rural communities and for Savo Island, it's Panueli Area Health Centre. Despite serving over 6,000 people with top-notch service, there's a pressing need for improvements. I need for improvement, especially the uh, uh, outpatient house and rest house. For the uh, patient who come and rest of the system, there's no proper for the outpatient. If you want to come, I'm going to down all the time. I don't have any proper placement for the rest of the And should improve, yeah. For doing any kind of maintenance for him, especially the bedding inside. Even if I'm a medicine, I'm going to all the way too. So I don't need him for anything much improve for this clinic, yeah. Every time, no. I always nurse him. I stop and I finish. Sometimes if I can, if I taste blood, if I malaria or something, I don't give him. I just give him Panadol or any other medicine normal. Though Sour Island is just an hour boat right away from the Solomon Islands capital, Honiara, health services like this still face major challenges. For solve them now, the issue yeah, they make care they make them need yeah, they need them for health center but they must increase. They now got a health staff below me must increase too, long way especially yeah, for achieve them now or the two three areas where. At the moment, Panoli Area Health Center is the only hope because all the eight post clinics have been closed down. Now, I've just chatted with Caroline, who is currently the registered nurse here in Panoli Area Health Clinic here in Savo Island. And sadly, she mentioned that there is a shortage of medicine here at the moment, which they face medicines like Panadol, Coatem, Amoxlin, Septrin. And even the saline as well. However, when it comes to medicine shortage like this in Savo Island, she said that only improvisation will help. Sterile water, sterile water. Blum fella, him finished last month yet. So me use him na normal saline. Him na me use him for mixing medicine for nilam na tab. Kini wa kamlo cough pneumonia osem. Him no mana what me use him. Me bara stress for lama tam malaria medicine ya bara down dan steril watamu anu ma. So misi na i. So mi atu ringgol tu lagi, mi ringgol tu lagi, tu lagi. Ose otse lo dia no ma tu prima queen no ma for since last two months ago. She is braving her challenges every day, but the struggle here now is to find ways to keep the service going. Kata Linda belum ni kalau kata nak saya perlu kau kim kau tingting jual siam, kau kam dream clinic. No more too. So by them no save look change change, eh? by them still the same, same, same no more. This area health center with supports Kaugele, Bonala and Koela nurse aid post is in crucial condition. It's falling apart due to termite damage, lacks electricity, toilets and has unreliable water. With only one full-time nurse, it has just two beds with no bedding, chairs or even table. The center is struggling to survive. Reporting for Tavoli News, I'm Jeremy Guao. The Royal Solomon Islands Police Force EOD department has successfully completed a week-long operation aimed at addressing the threat posed by unexploded ordinances, which are being reported in the Russell Island Central Island Province recently. Now, UXOs and remnants of past conflicts that continue to pose significant risks to the safety and well-being of individuals at affected areas in Solomon Islands. Now, during the operation, the EOD team responded to multiple reports from the community and safely disposed of UXOs, ensuring the safety of people in the Russell Islands. Acting Director of EOD, Inspector Clifford Tunuki, says EOD operations in the Russell Islands have been completed. 
Director Tunuki acknowledges the support and cooperation from the communities and advice to continue in reporting any suspected USOs to EOD. Director Tunuki says we must work together to ensure those residing in these affected areas are safe and reminds the general public if there is a sighting of any bomb-like object, please do not touch or meddle with it, but report to your nearest police station or call EOD mobile at 7495215.